Hello, and you are very welcome to Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioko, and of course, you can see a lot of color, you can hear a lot of voices, there are tons of flags around the place. We are here to celebrate Europe Day with the European Union in Ghana, the residence of the Ambassador of the European Union to Ghana, His Excellency Ikar Razali. Now, what is EU Day? What is European Union Day? What is Europe Day, as it is known? It's celebrated every year on the 5th of May by the Council of Europe, but on the 9th of May every year, the European Union celebrates Europe Day. In 1964, five member states came together as founders of the European Union, and today, in 2022, we have 27 members of the European Union. Now, this is not just what makes it special, the fact that we're celebrating Europe Day, but this also marks 65 years of Ghanaian-European relations, both economic and social, and of course, there's a political angle to that as well. So you're very welcome. We're celebrating here tonight with the European Union in Ghana. And when we return from the break, we get into all the fun and enjoy the pomp and majesty. I've seen the Gamanche here. You know that that makes me excited as a Ghana girl. We'll be right back. She's gone when she's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away, in the sunshine, when she's gone, it's not warm when she's away. In the sunshine, when she's gone, when she's always gone too long. She goes away In the sunshine oh, sunshine Be my sunshine Be my sunshine In the sunshine In the sunshine In the sunshine oh, When she's gone When she's always gone too long Anytime she goes away, she goes away, she goes away In the sunshine when she's gone When she's always gone too long Anytime she goes away to celebrate 65 years of the European Union's partnership with Ghana. Ghana's capital is Accra. And here we are as the custodians of custom and tradition. You look very beautiful this evening. Put your hands together for yourselves I would say that it's not much I would say, but what I would say is let's have a joyous evening as we celebrate this event. 
Chano Manyaba. Good evening. Your Royal Majesty, I would like first and foremost to thank you for your presence and show appreciation because like many of the colleagues here, we are dwelling on your territory and on your land. So for your hospitality, thank you very much. Dear Honorable Minister of Defense, dear Dominique Nitiwul, dear Deputy Minister of Trade, dear Deputy Minister of Finance, dear other honorable members of government, fellow colleagues from the diplomatic community, dear fellow ambassadors, dear colleagues, ambassadors of the European member states of the European Union residents in Ghana, dear friends of culture, business, development, cooperation, academia, and media, you are so much here this evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mima Mo Nina Akwaba. 65 is a good number. It's normally the age citizens retire and enjoy well-deserved rest. 65 is also the years past since Ghana's independence, which was celebrated in remarkable fashion in Cape Coast two months ago. Lastly, 60 years have passed since the signing of the Treaty of Rome, which laid the foundation of our European Union, an union born from an idea, the idea of brotherhood, cooperation, and solidarity between nations. On the 9th of May, 1950, the day that we are celebrating today as Europe Day, a French minister of Luxembourgish origin with a German name proposed to work together with Germany and other European nations by creating a coal and steel community, precisely steel and coal that fed the eternal and infernal war machines at the time. At the same time, major changes happened everywhere in the world. The logical struggle for freedom and autonomy on the African continent culminated in the independence of several countries from colonial rule, of which Ghana was the first, led by Kwame Nkrumah. Almost since Ghana's independence, the countries of Europe have been present and started a partnership and friendship with the country. Over these past decades, a lot has been achieved in this regard. The European Union has sided with Ghana in its democratic quest, supported civil society, and promoted essential freedoms, especially free speech and free media. The EU supported various national elections through electoral election observation missions in 2016, in 2020, all dim, free, fair, and transparent. Over the past decades, and together with other partners, we supported Ghana towards the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, and we are going to do the same for the Sustainable Development Goals to be reached by 2030, leaving no one behind. No later, no later than February this year, the European Union leaders met the African Union counterparts to jointly agree on an ambitious agenda based on shared principles. So no later than in February this year, the European Union and their African counterparts met to set an ambitious agenda based on shared principle and shared interest. This is a reminder of the fact that the EU is by far the number one partner to the African continent when it comes to trade, investment, and development cooperation. Over the past 65 years, we have built an internal market of 450 million consumers, a community of 450 million citizens, and a constituency of almost 
400 million voters. Testament to the strong and good relations between the EU and Ghana and the President Nana Adodankwa, who followed several visits to the EU institutions in Brussels over the last years. On the EU side, the Commissioner for International Partnership, Mrs. Yuta Upilainen, was recently here in Accra announcing our new financial package of 203 million for the coming three years. A visit is a reminder that even if the aggression of Russia against Ukraine is a major source of concern and priority to the EU, Africa and Ghana in particular continue to be a central EU partner at global level. The launch of our new programming, which was not affected by the war in Ukraine, speaks volume on the strength of the EU-Ghana partnership. I promise you I will be brief and I will not dwell on the weft and breadth of our cooperation in great detail. I would like to conclude that as a member of the UN Security Council, Ghana has been unequivocal in condemning the recent Russian aggression, showing once again Ghana's active advocacy for a rules-based multilateral order. We have also experienced instability and conflict closer here in the region, in Guinea-Conakry, Mali, and lastly in neighboring Burkina Faso. Men of the army hosted civilian government and took over power. The EU continue to work with the government, citizens, and civil society of Ghana with you, sir, Minister of Defense, with Ghana currently chairing ECOWAS to cherish, strengthen, and deepen what the country is so rightly proud of, democracy, stability, and prosperity, a custodian of human rights and rule of law in Ghana as well as in the rest of West Africa. Before concluding, let me take the opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to my colleague of the European country represented in Ghana, namely the Ambassador of France, the High Commissioner of Malta, the Ambassador of Italy, the Ambassador of Denmark, the Ambassador of Czech Republic, the Ambassador of Germany, the Ambassador of the Netherlands, the Ambassador of Hungary, the Ambassador of Spain. All together, we are part of what we call the Team Europe, and I am happy and proud to see that we are stronger together. I would like to conclude in saying that my hope and my wish that Ghana and European Union will continue their excellent partnership to create that space and to address the common challenges ahead of us. I'm committed to help maintain and strengthen this bridge between Europe and Ghana at institutional and political level, of course, but at people's level as well. Here's a toast to the Republic of Ghana, to the good health of President Nana Akufuado, and to the great people of Ghana and to our continued friendship. So let me begin by expressing my joy to represent government and to be in your company this evening to celebrate Europe Day, the day that commemorates the anniversary of the Schumann Declaration, which proposed the creation of Europe coal and steel community that preceded the European Union. It is very refreshing that we are able to meet in person on this auspicious day following the COVID-19 pandemic and its adverse impact on our lives. After two years, Thank you very much that today we are able to meet in person. It is pertinent to acknowledge how far we have come since then, from lockdowns to the compulsory wearing of masks to various restrictions. 
One cannot but reflect on the trajectory of events over the past two years and appreciate the current reality which has been made possible with the collaboration and support of our development partners, of which the European Union has played a key facilitating role. With assistance for the European Union, through the COVAX facility, Ghana benefited from dozens of vaccines which complemented the efforts by government to make COVID-19 vaccines accessible to Ghanaians across the length and breadth of this country and to curb the spread of the virus. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ghana and the European Union have enjoyed strong cordial relations and cooperation which date back to the Lomi One Convention of 1975 signed between the European Union and, the, and Africa, Caribbean and Pacific member states. Over the years, our relations have deepened through collaboration in various fields such as agriculture, health, education, budgetary support, and water management, just to name a few, and the holding of political consultations to discuss issues of mutual interest with the most recent being held in November 2021, of course, and I was part of it. Very grateful to be have invited then. The close relations between our, our country, Ghana, and the European Union have also been characterized by high-level visits, with the most recent visit by His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nanadu Danko Akufado, to the European Union Parliament, the European Council, and the European Investment Bank in 2021, which culminated in fruitful outcomes such as the security of 82.5 million euros support from the European Union Investment Bank to strengthen healthcare, provide specialist medical equipment under COVID-19 health response plan, and the signing of 170 million euro European Investment Bank facility for the establishment of the Development Bank of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, from the European Union side, we recall the recent visit to Ghana by Madam Jata Opila Nium, European Union Commissioner for the International Partnership, during which various projects aimed at stimulating green and inclusive growth and reducing inequalities, among others, were signed. Cooperation with the European Union has led to the commencement of processes towards the establishment of a vaccine production and manufacturing plant in Ghana to produce COVID-19 vaccines and, more importantly, malaria and tuberculosis vaccines to serve Ghana and the West African sub-region. This project, when completed, will enable Ghana to handle more efficiently any future outbreaks of coronavirus, reduce malaria-related deaths in Ghana and the sub-region as well as build domestic capacity to fill, finish, and package vaccines, which feeds into the African Union vision of establishment of vaccine manufacturing hubs on the continent cognizance of the fact that a healthy people is critical to economic development, we in Ghana welcome this initiative and look forward to its implementation. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ghana commends the European Union for its continued commitment to the implementation of the European Union Partnership Agreement between Ghana and the European Union, and I'm happy to note that through this partnership and predecessor agreements, Trade between Ghana and the European Union flourished and assisted Ghana producers and exporters to improve on the quality of their products as well as improve Ghana's export capacity and competitiveness on international markets. Other areas worthy of mention is that Ghana and the European Union have been working as CDOs to tackle issues in the fisheries sub-sector aimed at minimizing illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing and promoting a more sustainable fishing practice industry within this country. We are also collaborating in the cocoa industry as we exploit ways to improve this sector in the past years. It is in this regard that the President of the Republic, Nanadu Danko Akufado, together with his Ivorian counterpart, reiterated their commitment to sustainability and improving the living condition of cocoa farmers during the recent Africa European Summit held in Brussels and called on the European Union to join them in an economic pact aimed at developing a sustainable cocoa sector that meets 
a recognized sustainability standard ensures adequate remuneration to reward cocoa farmers and respond to European customer demands. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and the line of cooperation is the desire of government of Ghana and the European Union to improve on the living conditions of Ghanaians, create employment for Ghanaian youth, and strengthen the private sector to the true engine of the growth in Ghana. Government recognizes in this regard that economic development is a sine qua known for peace and stability. We note in that conjunction connection, the active security cooperation between the European Union and Ghana aimed at curbing terrorism and the rise of violent extremism in West Africa and the Gulf of Guinea. We really thank you for this. This is very crucial to us. May I invite you today to join me in a toast to the continued excellent relationships between Ghana and the European Union. May Ghana and the European Union live long, and may the friendship that exists between us, Ghana and the European Union, continue to live and live forever. I thank you very much. May God bless you all. Diplomatic license right here on City TV. Of course, your station of choice. My name is Apioko. Now we're still here celebrating Europe Day at the residence of the European Ambassador, the European Union Ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Irshad. Razali. It's a soiree tonight, but it's been a week-long celebration of so many different things. There was some kind of a, a meeting, a celebration, together with the Ghana Institute of, of Journalists. And what we were doing on that day was talking about World Press Freedom, World Press Freedom Day. Wonderful. There was a movie screening. I believe there was a Ghanaian movie and a European movie that was screened at Ghana's National Theatre in Accra. And there was also a soiree, some kind of an interaction with the Erasmus Plus scholars. These are Ghanaian students who have studied in Europe on the ticket of the European Union. And there was a meeting with them just to see how they're getting along, how they're assimilating back and giving back to Ghana after their studies in Europe. And tonight is a big soiree. All the diplomats are here. Europe is here in Ghana. Now, you just heard the speech given by His Excellency Irshad Razali. Of course, he is, I'll repeat, the ambassador of the European Union to Ghana. We also heard from Ghana's very own Minister of Defense, Honorable Dominic Nitiwo. He spoke and said a lot of different things. Of course, if you, if you don't know, the EU is not just interested in trade and culture and politics. The EU is also very interested in security in Ghana and the region. And they've worked very closely with Ghana as a partner for 65 years because, as they say, Ghana is peaceful, Ghana has maintained security and the levels that people want to see in the world and whatnot. And so our Minister of Defense was here. We've also heard from the Ghana Of course, you're in Accra. You must pay homage to the Ghana people, the custodians of the land. And the Ghana was welcomed very beautifully and he was given an opportunity to speak as well. So at this point, we'll go for a quick break once again. When we come back, we'll speak to some of the guests who are here and see some other wonderful things that are happening here at Europe Day in Accra.
welcome back. And it's time to speak to a gentleman who I've been chatting with. Look, he's one of the most interesting people I know. He's extremely passionate about Ghana. And I'm, I'm just curious to see what your reaction would be at home, where you actually see him. He's Ghanaian. I like to say he's more Ghanaian than anything else. Honorable Nico Van Stalden. He is the Honorary Consul of Bulgaria to Ghana. Hi, Nico. Thank How you, are you doing? Fine. In, in your EU blue? Oh, yes. This is yes, Netherlands yes. blue. No, no, no. <laughs> to see you. So let's just talk a little bit about the EU and I mean 65 years of Ghana European relations and I know that if there's anyone who understands those relations you are definitely if not the only person one of those people. <laughs> de de definitely, one of those people. <laughs> definitely not the only person. <laughs> one of those people. So let's just talk about that. What are your opinions about what the relationship between Ghana and Europe have been over the years? Um, uh, currently, I'm the, the Honorary Consul for the Republic of Bulgaria to the Republic of Ghana. Uh, I'm operating under the Ambassador of Bulgaria who is resident in Abuja and he's also the Ambassador for Bulgaria to Ghana. Um, I have an, a different relationship with the EU because I, I used to be the Executive Director of the European Business Organization, especially during the time that uh, a lot of people are not mentioning anymore, but the EU and Ghana has, have an EPA, an Economic Partnership Agreement, under which uh, Ghana can, uh, can very easy trade with the European Union. And this is one of the reasons why, of course, we're able to export our vegetables, yes. our fruits, yes, yes. And even now our African prints and all that. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, those days, the idea when I was the director of EBO, the idea was to have an EPA for ECOWAS. But there were several ECOWAS countries who didn't agree, so at the end of the day it became an EPA between Ghana and the EU and Ivory Coast was the only other country who also jumped on board. But, no, but that's beautiful and this history is important because uh -huh. I don't think a lot of people understand the reason why we would have European countries coming to Ghana. The EU is here and the EU has a very strong presence in Ghana doing lots of work in Ghana. Yeah. EU member states are doing lots of work in Ghana. We have people like you who are even on a personal level fighting for the cultural elements of Ghana to prevail and to survive and what's not. I don't think people understand that there's this history. So thank you very much for mentioning the EPA. But let's also talk about the cultural angle of it. Ghana and the EU, I mean, when we think of Europe, unfortunately, a lot of the time we think of colonization. But I like to believe that post-1957, and today we're celebrating not just Europe Day, but 65 years of a Ghanaian-European partnership, post-colonization, post-independence in Ghana, there's been a, 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 a very beautiful cultural exchange. What, what's your take on that? Uh, my take on, on it is, if you understand somebody's culture and somebody's way of, uh, the way we stand in life, and the Europeans come to understand the way Ghanaians think, and the way, I always say a Ghanaian yes doesn't definitely mean yes. It's often a way of being polite, and uh, it's only later that you, you can start negotiating about something whilst as, a, as a, a European who doesn't know our culture is simply thinking, okay, they've said yes, so let's move on. But that's not how, how things work in Ghana, not even in, in, in Africa. And, and I've always tried, uh, I mean, when I started my, my career in Ghana after I came from, from Europe, um, I was the director of the Ghana Netherlands Chamber of Commerce and Culture and culture was always a very important aspect of doing business because if you want to do business you have to understand somebody's culture, some, how to give somebody respect and, and once you know that and you show that respect it's much easier to do business than just uh, buy and sell. Yeah, as I say, when you trust somebody yes. then you can do business. Yes. Yes. Then you can do business. You said something, I don't even think you realized that you said it, but you said people come in here and they don't even understand our culture and then they want to do business with us. And I did stop in the introduction of you, I said that you're more Ghanaian than, than anything else. You know? Thank you. Let's talk about your love for Ghana very briefly. Yes, you represent Europe tonight, but you also represent Ghana very strongly. 
Yeah, I was I was raised by a father who was uh, crazy about Africa. He came to Africa in 1953, first to Liberia, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, and he was very enthusiastic. So I grew up in a house full of uh, African artifacts and all that kind of things. I went to a Catholic school and a Catholic priest came from Ghana telling us how Ghana was. So as a child already, I was very enthusiastic about love in Ghana. Africa, Africa, <laughs> Africa in general. And then coincidentally, I met, uh, I met my Ghanaian wife <laughs> and, uh, in 1991. I have two brothers. Uh, we all had several girlfriends. My father was somebody limiting, limiting his conversation to uh, hello, how are you? And goodbye, <laughs> see you next time. And in, in between, there was nothing. Except with my Ghanaian wife, who, he could talk for hours. So I thought, okay, then this, this is, is the one. one. <laughs> and I'm sure at some point we'll spend more time with you and yes, we'll yes. talk more about, about that beautiful relationship. Oh. But any final words, any um, felicitation on this August Me. occasion of Europe Day yeah. and of course 65 years of Ghanaian European relationship? Yes. Uh, Especially because I'm representing Bulgaria, uh, Ghanaians should also look not just to the Europe everybody knows, France, the Netherlands, uh, Germany, but also to the Eastern European countries. Bulgaria, Poland, Czech Republic, uh, we have so much to offer in trade with, uh, with Ghana. And I always tell them, if you want to buy European goods for European quality, you can buy it at more affordable prices in the eastern part of Europe than in the western part of Europe. Wonderful. The Honorary Consul of Bulgaria to Ghana has spoken. Nico, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you in person and um, thank you for all that you do promoting Ghanaian culture alongside Bulgarian and Dutch culture as well. Yes, thank yes, you so that, much. That's my heritage. <laughs> I always you. say that's the country where I was born because I don't have too much with it anymore. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Please Honorable Nico Van Saldenen. So, yes, I will be speaking I'm to him yeah. for a longer period at some point on diplomatic license. We're still here celebrating Europe Day at the residence of the European ambassador to Ghana. The, the ambassador, the representative, head of mission of the, of the mission of the European Union to Ghana. And look, lots to go around, people are having fun. It's like a diplomatic haven here. Everybody is here tonight. My name is Apioka, we'll be right back. diplomatic license right here on City TV and we're still celebrating Europe Day here at the residence of the head of mission of the European Union in Ghana and I'm here with Mr. Charles Abani, somebody else who I owe an interview. I know I have to catch him and speak to him because he has so much experience. He's a, I mean a firefighter of a diplomat and I can't wait to spend more time with him but for today I'm just going to speak to him a little bit about Europe Day. He is the UN coordinator, resident coordinator in Ghana. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm well. Fine. I see you've got your SDGs. Yes, yes. yes absolutely. <laughs> We're the SDG people. Very necessary. Yes. So let's just very briefly, I don't think a lot of people realize that, yes, we've got WHO, we've got UNFPA, we've got UNHCR, but people don't realize that there's a, a guy who's coordinating all of this. Let's just talk very briefly about that office that you represent. So in Ghana, there are 32 UN agencies who operate here in Ghana. Uh, 21 of them have footprints on the ground, and the others don't necessarily have an office here, but they still function here. So there's quite an array of work that takes place. And the role of the UN resident coordinator is to ensure that everything we do is coming together and supporting Ghana on its mission for self-reliance and, and hopefully a Ghana beyond date. That sounds like a lot of work. Yes, it is a huge <laughs> amount of work. But, but I, I love it and I know you're the man for the job. And we're grateful to, to the European Union. I mean, increasingly, obviously, the UN stands for multilateralism and the need for the world really to come together to solve the big problems. The big problems around peace and security globally, the big problems around climate, the climate crisis, 
and making sure that we're all prepared for a future. Uh, we know what happened in the COVID pandemic. It's taken real collaboration across the world to be able to address the COVID pandemic. And so the UN stands behind that. And EU Day represents a coming together of Europe as a partner to Africa and a partner to Ghana. So this is an important day to celebrate. That's such a beautiful way to sum it all up. Such a beautiful way to sum it all up. But let's just talk briefly also about how someone like, or an entity like the EU has helped to make the UN's job better or easier in Ghana. Yeah, so or even around the, the continent. I mean, fundamentally, Ghana and all the European Union countries are signed up members of the United Nations. And so that whole multilateralism is something that we see a strong commitment from the European Union We're on. We're seeing it manifest, yes, literally. Uh, literally yeah. from the different countries as well as from the EU as a collective body. And they support us on a number of things that we do around climate justice, around working on helping entrepreneurs to gain traction, on working on issues around children, on health. I mean, the array of areas, there's 32 agencies, I could go on all <laughs> evening. But the EU is a strong, reliable partner for Ghana. And remember, the work we do here is to support Ghana. Absolutely. And so, to the extent that we are able to provide that assistance, either through the different bilaterals or through the EU as a body, then um, we found the collaboration here from His Excellency Urchard and all the ambassadors to be a very strong and collegial one. Wonderful. Do you have any words of congratulations, felicitations, as we would say, um, for, because for today we're not just celebrating Europe Day, of course. Europe, the European Union has come together as a unit since 1964. But even prior to that, there's a relationship between Europe and Ghana. We're celebrating 65 years of that, right alongside 65 years of Ghana's independence. Do you have any words of congratulations? So, I mean, you know, Ghana is at the forefront of a number of things across the globe. And on, in Africa, Ghana is a first on many, many issues. Um, and I think partnership is one where Mr. President himself, and in fact, the whole disposition of Ghana is one of being open to that collaboration and engagement. So congratulations to Ghana. Um, there's a ways to go, but we take, we take the steps forward towards Ghana taking its rightful place at the global stage. It's a member of the Security Council Absolutely. and an active player I am so in the global, to see in the that, global, uh, global As a former MUN student, yes. I, mean, I did MUN throughout yeah. high school, to see Ghana take her place yes. at the Security Council, on the Security Council, is amazing. So it really, if we, if we look at ECOWAS, and ECOWAS is another version of the EU, Ghana's leading on that. You look at the African Union, Ghana's playing a very strong role there. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area, increased collaboration between Africa and Europe. Ghana's at the forefront of that. So congratulations to the European Union, it's their day. But congratulations to Ghana for also playing this kind of leadership role in terms of bringing the world together. It's right up our street and that's exactly what we support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Charles Abani, he is the UN coordinator, resident coordinator here in Ghana. And like I said, we'll be speaking a lot more to him later on. We'll have two hours of screen time. I'm sure we'll, we'll play whatever game he wants to play. We'll eat whatever food he wants to eat. And we'll talk about the great work, fabulous work that the UN is doing here in Ghana and on the continent as a whole. More to come here at Europe Day in Accra. Welcome back. This is still Diplomatic License on City TV. Now it's time to speak to who I'm calling the man of the moment. I'm sure you disagree with me. You say there's a whole team and indeed there's a village that made Europe Day and the celebrations of everything during Europe Week come together. But His Excellency Ishad Razali is currently my guest here on the floor. And I'm just going to speak to him a little bit about what this whole celebration means for his office, for the European Union, and of course, for Ghana European relations. Hello, Your Excellency. Dr. Ko, I'm so happy to see you. Happy to see you. You're welcome. Thank you. So we're in your home throughout this past week. We've done so many things. We did um, World Press Freedom Day with the Ghana Institute of Journalists. We 
had some film screenings at the National Theatre. We went on an industry tour to see some of the great work that the European Union is doing. And now, there's a soiree in your home. This is Europe Day, the 9th of May. I know that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the European Union was formed in 1964. Currently, we have 27 member states, right? So, what does it, this mean? What does Europe Day mean to celebrate this? for the European Union and the Member States. The 9th of May, we are celebrating the moment when the leaders of France, Germany, and other nations decided, five years after the Second World War, to put forces together and to agree to build brotherhood, cooperation, solidarity, to move away from war, and to move towards a rule-based order based on friendship, cooperation, brotherhood, and solidarity. This is what we are celebrating today. And in 57, 65 years ago, the Union has been created as an economic community first, and then a citizens' union. Okay. Because what makes it special Together with the 27 member states, we have created a space of 450 million citizens, consumers, and voters, because these citizens are electing the member of parliament. They are electing their leaders. This is like the European Union Parliament, the EU Parliament. But that's amazing. So just by this, and it may seem like a simple act, but I imagine it took a lot of diplomacy, a lot of conversation for these member states to come together and say, we are forming this brotherhood, this collaboration, this union for Europe and for the, for the future of Europe's children. And now today, we're seeing that and it's very beautiful. And you go to Europe and you can travel across countries. With, yes. it's, it's, it's like you're in one big country. Yes. You like can move country. from Portugal to Romania, from Finland to Malta. Countries which don't have a lot in common, actually. But over the decades, we have built a common sense of belonging. And I think it is very important to build this culture of belonging to the same group, having the same interests, having the sense of solidarity. Of course, it was not easy. And it's not easy every day. Some don't agree on this or that, but in the end, there is this culture of together we are stronger. So ultimately, we have to agree on something. Yeah. That's very interesting because when I mean, a lot of people who are not European, for example, a lot of Ghanaians or a lot of Africans, when you think of Europe, you think of one big continent. We don't realize that there's Western, there's Eastern, there are different cultures. Even within countries that different cultures that exist, different ways of life. What's the one thing you would say, or maybe if you mention three things that you feel really bond Europeans today and that make the European Union as strong as it's become? First of all, the market. We call it the common market. You trade the same way from Portugal to Romania, meaning that you can ship your goods, you can move as a people, you can move uh, capital, and you can, you know, propose services everywhere, okay? No border, no taxes, no hurdle. Your market is 450 million people. But more importantly, the sense of being part of the same project and the same family. And unfortunately, the European project is a bit challenged by the Russian invasion on Ukraine. Not that Ukraine is part of Europe, but it's the very idea of democracy, sovereignty, freedom, which has been challenged. And there, the sense of belonging to the same group, the same family, is even stronger now. So I think this is beyond money, beyond market, beyond trade, beyond everything with, with what makes it important and special. Identity, identity, oh, wonderful. So now let's talk about 65 years also of Ghanaian-European relations. 
Ghana is also celebrating 65 years of independence. It's no secret. If people didn't know, I don't know what rock they've been underneath. But 65 years of Ghanaian-European relations. And we've seen that relationship grow. Again, not just with trade, but we become real friends. You know, a real support system for each other. There's so much that the European Union, for example, is doing in Ghana. We also saw the Erasmus Plus um, scholars being celebrated in the past week. The EU has given a home, a scholarly, academic home, for Ghanaians who also want to study there. But equally, we have Europeans coming to do research and studies in Ghana exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, just how would you define what our relationship has become as Ghana and Europe in the past 65 years? The relation is based, uh, it's a two-way street. Ghanaian students go to Europe, European students go to Ghana. We are trading in both directions, but more importantly, we share the same values. Democracy, rule of law, rule-based, multilateral order, support for democracy when it's, you know, tested in West Africa. The EU is a key supporter of the current chair, which is Ghana, of ECOWAS because they are doing so much in order to restore constitutional and democratic order in West Africa. And these are values that speak to us and that we share. And we are supporting the current chair, the president of Ghana, President Akufuado, in his mandate to do so. More importantly, at global level, as you know, Ghana is sitting in the UN Security Council. And there again, we have a whole range of issues of common interest. It's not only because we like you or you like us, but we have common interest. There again, climate change, um, rule-based democratic order, once again, security. stability, security at global level in Africa, in West Africa. We have so much in common. But during the 65 years, we have been here for development, for education, health, roads, you name it. And now we are moving, because the country is moving forward as well. We are moving for economic cooperation, supporting entrepreneurship, supporting the youngsters of Ghana, the ordinary heroes who are recycling plastic, who are recycling e-waste, who are recycling bricks, so on and so forth. And we are creating new avenues for them. We are supporting agriculture because this is where we can employ huge numbers of youth and women, where we can increase production, where we can localize value addition, where we can make cocoa more sustainable. This is what we are doing together. So we are, I would say, in, uh, bound by common interests and sharing the same values, which is, I would say, the best recipe for enduring bonds. I agree with you. I agree with you. And it's, it's such a wonderful, beautiful thing to see all of the things that you've described being celebrated here at your residence tonight. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you so much for sharing Europe Day, not just with the European community in Ghana, not at all. but with Ghanaians. Not at all. It's, it's we wanted wonderful. to showcase the friendship we had His Majesty the King Gamanche. We had number of members of government but beyond that we have friends for the culture from the trade from business from development cooperation from the media and we wanted to celebrate together with all of you this important moment and don't forget we have the people from food bazaar, yes, food bazaar. Food bazaar. <laughs> i wanted personally food bazaar to be part of it because we are not showcasing only European things, we are showcasing our shared culture and exchanges. It's wonderful, it's wonderful. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. But, so, on this day, the 9th of May, it's Europe Day, it's, it's been Europe Week, it's Europe Month. Is there anything special you want to say to not just the Europeans, but also the Ghanaians with whom you, you found a home and have become family as well. So first to Europeans and then secondly no, to the Europeans, Ghanaians also become your family. <laughs> we, we are a key partner to this country, Ghana, because we share so much in history, in geography, but as well in future. 
and for my Ghanaian friends. I would like to thank them for making this place so good for me and my family and being so open and being so friendly to us and being as well so responsive because we have a work and a task to conduct together. There are so many people I would like to thank. I cannot single out one, but in the diplomatic community, in the media, in culture, in the economy, in business, everywhere. We have very deep ties and very constructive agenda. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. And I'm sure at some point when you, you finish getting down from all the highs and the, the, the wonderful things that are happening here tonight, we'll have a longer conversation about you, your work here in Ghana, and all the brilliant things that the EU represents and that you're doing. Here. Anytime. This place is your place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, how about that for an ambassador of the EU to Ghana, His Excellency Ishad Razal, I mean, amazing gentleman, really has Ghana at heart and really understands the job of what it means for the EU to be in Ghana. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. So it's been an amazing evening, clearly, here on Diplomatic License as we celebrate Europe Day with the European Union mission in Ghana. Of course, this is happening at the residence of His Excellency Irshad Rezali, Ambassador of the European Union to Ghana. Look, wonderful people, lots of diplomatic conversations to be had, and the best celebration ever of 65 years of Europe-Ghana relations as well. Um, I, I mean, there's so much to be said. We can't do all of this tonight. We can't talk to everyone here tonight. But just know that it's been a beautiful night, a beautiful week as we celebrated Europe. All that Europe has stood for over the years, where Europe has come from, where Europe is going, and where Ghana fits in as far as all of this is concerned. My name is Apio and this has been Diplomatic License right here on City TV. Aviento, arrivederci.